Lady Sutton's Kentucky team is 8-0, number two in the country, and sophomore guard Rex Chapman continues to prove he's the real thing. He leads Kentucky in scoring. He and senior Ed Davender give the Cats one of the top backcourts in the nation. They've got every reason to be happy in the land of bluegrass, but tonight they've got a road game in the SEC. It's not going to be on New Durham's home court, but it will be in Atlanta against the Georgia Bulldogs. Last season, Willie Anderson blossomed into a star. He's just as key this year. He and Chapman were Pan Am teammates. Tonight, they battled. Our second game tonight, Notre Dame on the road. Digger Phelps' team is 6-2. David Rivers is at full strength this year, and the Irish need him to dominate. So far, he's done it. This is his last year. It's been his most productive, over 23 points a game. They call LaSalle's Bill Morris speedy, and they call a sophomore forward Lionel Simmons fantastic. He was the best freshman in the country last year. He's the engine room for the Explorer offense. He's closing in on 1,000 points tonight. to the noisy Omni in Atlanta where the Southeastern Conference college basketball season is set to begin in earnest. Tonight, it's the Georgia Bulldogs against the Wild Cats of Kentucky. There ain't no in second rank. Hello, everyone, and welcome to college basketball, a triple hitter tonight. I'm Tim Brando. We begin with this game, then Notre Dame and LaSalle Sports Center follows, and then number one Arizona has to travel to the pit in Albuquerque to take on New Mexico. This game, Kentucky and Georgia, could be a possible upset. A lot of people think, and as I turn to Larry Conley, this game is earmarked for success for Georgia because Kentucky has been pushed so greatly, and Larry, both of these teams have really changed cosmetically in a short period of time. Tim, both clubs have sort of a different look than what they had last year. You've got Winston Bennett back in the lineup for Kentucky, coming back off of a very serious knee injury. Reconstruction's got him back and playing extremely well. Gives them a very strong inside threat. For Georgia, on the other hand, you've got two players who were academic casualties last spring, and they're back playing again. Tony Mack and Patrick Hamilton. Two very quick players. Adds an extra dimension to uh, Hugh Durham's club. Gives them a lot more quickness than they had last year. Everyone knows about Kentucky. They are the heavily publicized team in this league. There's no question about that. But Georgia is a team that people know a little, little about, really. They've lost four games. But that's deceiving. New Durham teams never really come around to the latter part of this month. Well, they really don't. And he sort of skirted the Pacific Rim going yeah. to Tokyo and Hawaii to play a few games. He came back. He's played one game since he's gotten back into this country. I think they're the type of basketball team that gets better in February and March. And you can look for this team to be there when the NCAA bids are handed out. They're good. A lot of people believe the Southeastern Conference is one of the elite conferences in college basketball. Once you see the athletes Georgia has, you'll understand why. Let's get now back to the studio and Bob Thank you very much, Tim. Kentucky and Georgia, just a few moments away, as you mentioned, it's the beginning of our triple header tonight on ESPN. Right after that game at the Omni, we go to the Palestra, where strange things can happen in basketball. It'll be LaSalle taking on Notre Dame, and right after Sports Center, 11.30 Eastern Time, the number one team in the country, Arizona. Coming along at halftime of this Kentucky-Georgia game, we will have highlights of number three, Pitt, taking on Florida, and also news of a major blow to the Pitt program today. Also, North Carolina on the road in Los Angeles at Pauley Pavilion in a very tight game in Chicago between Bradley and Illinois. Updating with scores and highlights throughout the entire evening. Back to Atlanta, Kentucky and the Dogs after this. ESPN's NCAA Basketball. Kentucky and Georgia. Brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By the financial professionals at Payne Weber. And by Volvo, a car you can believe in. There is another revealing statistic, Kentucky leading the series. But remember, they didn't discover basketball in the, most of this league until the 1970s. But when they did, Georgia came on strong with the help of Hugh Durham, winning four of the last meetings with Kentucky and their 13 and 8 here at the Omni. We're ready now for the starting lineups for tonight's game. With that, public address announcer Larry England. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Omni in tonight's SEC game between the Kentucky Wildcats and your Georgia Bulldogs. 
Here are tonight's starting lineups. First of all, for the visiting Wildcats, at guard is 6'4 sophomore from Owensboro, Kentucky, number three, Rex Chapman. At guard, a 6'2 senior from Brooklyn, New York, number 15, Ed Davender. At center, a 6'11 senior from Wrigley, California, number 44, Rob Luck. At forward, a 6'9 senior from Dawson, Georgia, number 55, Cedric Jenkins. And at forward, a 6'7 senior from Louisville, Kentucky, number 25, Winston Bennett. And the head coach of the Wildcats, Eddie Sutton. And now the starters for your Georgia Bulldogs. At guard, a 6'2 junior from Gainesville, Georgia, number 14, Patrick Hamilton. At guard, a 6'7 senior from Atlanta, Georgia, number 40, Willie Anderson. At center, a 6'10 sophomore from Roswell, Georgia, number 33, Alex Kessler. At forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Greensboro, Georgia, number 4, Eric Burdett. And at forward, a 6'5 junior from Tampa, Florida, number 21, Tony Mack. And the coach of the Bulldogs in his 10th season, Hugh Durham. The cultural exchanges and the holiday tournaments are over. It's January, folks. Time for the cats and dogs to get down to business in the SEC. Back with a tip after this. In Atlanta, Tim Brando along with Larry Conley, the second-ranked Wildcats of Kentucky against the Georgia Bulldogs. Time for your keys, Larry. Tim, when you start looking at these two clubs, there are a couple of things for Kentucky. One is the dominant inside game, led by that young man, Winston Bennett. He's come back from knee surgery. He's going to have a good game tonight. He's been playing very well in December. Secondly, I think you've got to get off to a good start, led by the senior leadership of Ed Davender. He's having a great year. He's the guy that's got to lead them. They've got to get away from this Georgia crowd. Let's look at Georgia now. The keys to winning for them is really containing Kentucky's guards. Everyone knows how good their guards are. Patrick Hamilton's got to be one of the keys in that area. Secondly for them, they've got to create over turnovers. Hugh Durham's clubs are always good on defense. They've got to be able to get them from those Kentucky guards. Our officials tonight, John Clockerty, Charlie Vaca, and Larry Ware, the best the Southeastern Conference has to offer in the toss control to Georgia. Tim, Kentucky's going to open up straight man-to-man. -man. It's going to be Davender on Hamilton, and it's going to be Chapman on Anderson. Boy, that's a great guard matchup for both of these clubs. Anderson baseline, Rex Chapman with the rebound. No surprises early from Eddie Sutton, starting with his usual defense, and there's a steal. Started by Tony Mack and finished by Chapman, who knocks it away. Great start to the ball game. A miss by Anderson, a rebound by Chapman, a steal by Mack, and Anderson came back with it. He tried to give it back to Mack on the break, but Chapman makes the good defensive play. He strips Mack right there of the ball. And once again, Hamilton running the show for Georgia. And Kentucky now breaks into what appears to be a bit of a matchup zone. Yeah, they're going to match up out of the out-of-bounds play, and it's a good move right now. They're going to force Georgia to shoot that ball from the outside, and they're pretty good shooters from the outside. Hamilton and Mack, both excellent shooters, and certainly that man, Anderson. Nice pass inside to Kessler. They like him. Count it. And the foul against Locke. Beautiful pass inside the paint to Alec Kessler. Good read right there by Anderson. He was on the Pan Am team this past summer. He got it to Kessler inside. Locke, out of defensive position, allowed him to get the inside. You see the frustrated look by Rob Locke. Alec Kessler, whose brother Chad also played for Georgia, does have a good outside shot to augment his ability in banging with the big boys in the Southeastern Conference. Tim, immediately Georgia goes full court pressure. Zone Three, press, 2-2-1. Two, two, 3 nothing Georgia. Only a minute deep from the Omni in Atlanta, the first of a triple header of college basketball on ESPN. We're happy you joined us for the start of what will be a great 88 college basketball season. Looks like Georgia might be matching up a little bit also in their zone defense. A little dangerous when you've got guards like Kentucky's got. 
That time, Rob Locke did not anticipate the pass from Davender. You know, that's a situation you've got to be a little bit selfish once in a while. Davender should have shot that ball instead of trying to give it to the inside. He was wide open. Well, you mentioned it in your keys. Kentucky needs to get off to the good start. Inside. Won't fall, and it's taken down by Jenkins. He's a role player, and he definitely fills his role adequately for Sutton. Bennett drills it from the perimeter. Well, Tim, you talk about a difference in a basketball team that one player can make. Winston Bennett has done that for Kentucky. They have really bounced back. They were 18-11 last year, and they've really come back strong this year. Anderson looking to spot up, took steps. Chapman giving Anderson a little bit of a problem over there. Defensively, he shut him down. Caused a turnover right there. Hugh Durham a little upset with that call. I think he was letting Fisher know about it, too. We talked about this at the outset. This is the kind of game that you'll see a lot of physical play underneath. Maybe a tough pacing in the first half, but by the second half, it could be just outstanding. Bennett inside, and it's 4-3. Four, four for Bennett, three for the Bulldogs. Great pass. Kessler is fouled again. Jenkins will pick up this one, though he and Locke were both in position to pick up the personal. Alec Kessler owes Willie Anderson two hamburgers now. He's given him two great passes, one for a three-point play, and this one, he's going to go back to the line. Looks that was Willie Anderson that made that pass, and it was about a 40-foot pass inside to Kessler. A foul in there, and a good move and a good look by Kessler. Everyone agrees he's the most improved player on this Georgia team since he was put in the spotlight last year with all of the problems that Hugh Durham had, losing the inside play with Mack, and you say, well, he's 6'5", but he's an inside player, and losing Hamilton as well. You know, the thing about him, too, Tim, is that he has grown. He's filled out physically. He's added about 15 pounds since last year. He worked on the weights in the offseason. He's really become a very good basketball player and an important cog in this Georgia Bulldog team. We're tied at four. And they're changing defenses from both coaches here at the outset. These guys are chess matches. Yeah, they really are. Everyone knows about Sutton's defensive philosophy. Not everyone knows about Hugh Durham's. He has been an ultra-successful defensive coach. He'll have to stop this man, though. And Bennett has all six for Eddie Sutton right now. I said at the top of the show he was going to have a good game. This man is playing extremely well for Kentucky right now. You know what that does? It helps them on the outside. It helps Davender and Chapman because then you've got to start thinking about Bennett's scoring ability. Hamilton loses it out of bounds. And Kentucky gets it back. Eddie Sutton just won another game at home and an historic one for him personally. And you see his assistants alongside. What a career he's had. His first season at Kentucky, 17-1 and in the SEC in his first year. Davender. And it's now an 8-4 game. And great Whitley pass. Kessler again. Boy, Locke nearly picked up a foul there. And Bennett does. Count it. It could be a three-point play again. Tim, it's obvious, I think, to everybody sitting here in the stands as you watch Davender on this previous move. He got by Hamilton. Mack tried to help, but he was too late getting there. What's happening is that George is just beating Kentucky down the floor. Kessler's getting down there after Kentucky makes the field goal. Lock right there. Chapman with a foul. They're just beating Kentucky down the floor. What do we say about athletes? Georgia has them. And you don't beat Kentucky down the floor that often. Eight to seven hours score Kentucky by one. It's a good strategy by Hugh Durham. You know, the Kentucky club relaxes a little bit after that made field goal, and they're just busting it to the other end. Anderson all over Chapman. Davender will take it, though. That's four for Davender. 10-7, UK. Well, Bennett with good help on the inside. And Max open on the far side there, but they couldn't see him. Anderson and Chapman have been a stalemate to this point. Defensively, they're both doing the job. I think that's a compliment to this club. Nice move inside by Hamilton. And Kessler went up the back of Rob Locke. Yeah, Tim, you make a good point about Anderson and Chapman there because both of these clubs have got such good athletes. Other people are doing the performance right now. All right, we have played just under four minutes. It has been all that we bargained for. Kentucky by three. 
certainly just begun in the month of January on ESPN. Big Monday premieres. Villanova against St. John's, followed by Purdue and Illinois. It all begins at 7.30 Eastern time here on ESPN this Monday. Boy, you know, if, if Chapman can't get it done, Davender will. Well, you're going to see two guards right here that not are not often talked about. Davender and Hamilton, one for Kentucky and the other for Georgia. You see Davender with an excellent move right there. That's straight off the streets of Brooklyn, New York. Davender. What well, was that? A replay of a replay. And it's tapped through by Locke. Locke or Bennett? I'm not sure. Bennett was up there. 12 7 the score. Both of them were there. And they did credit it to Winston Bennett, his eighth point. But Kentucky getting a lot more aggressive on defense. You see Jenkins out there. He's all over Mack. And there's the five second call by Larry Ware right on top of it. And we've seen Eddie Sutton's defense force now two turnovers in the last three Georgia possessions. Eleven consecutive NCAA trips for Sutton, counting his days in Arkansas. Only Dean Smith is better. That's the system. Tim, they're going to a 1 4 offense now against this Georgia zone defense. You can see Davender on the point of this offense. Watch him rotate in the middle and look for Jenkins and lock low. Nice pass. Jenkins is there. Right on cue, Coach Conley. 14 to 7 now. It's a seven point lead. The game's largest for Kentucky. Well, look at the pressure now. Jenkins all the way out on the floor. 6 9. Look at Locke out on the top of the circle. They're really getting after good move. And a great pass to Tony Mack. His first hoop. 14 to 9, our score. Then when you get that kind of pressure, you've got to look for the back door. And that's what Georgia did. And Mack was wide open. Lock bodying up against Kessler. Georgia changing defense. It's good look again to Lock. Offense. John Clockerty made the call. And Georgia will get it now going the other way. Let's watch it again. Now watch Bennett come up and look at the pass. Good move by Mack to get away from Bennett and move to the inside. You've got to have a, a trigger, a pressure release in that situation. And when you get that kind of pressure, you go back door. And Tony Mack was smart enough to do it. He got the pass in the bucket. Locke got the foul for a push. His second foul. And the team's fourth. Very for dead in the lineup now for Georgia. Really good player. Davender almost with a steal. Look at Hamilton forcing the issue and yet getting a foul after going into the lane against Winston Bennett. And that will get Eddie Sutton up and off the bench to lobby with Charlie Vacca. The second foul against Winston Bennett. And that's enough to concern that man. That's an argument he's going to lose, though, because it's already been blown. Look at Bennett making the move. He didn't have his feet planted right there. I thought that was a good call. Inbounds pass of beauty to Hamilton. And it's 14 to 11. Four unanswered now for Georgia. Davender has been a whirling dervish. That time he lost his footing out of bounds to Kentucky. Well, Anderson and Hamilton had Davender and Chapman in the corner over there and almost came up with that basketball. And Chapman was lucky to come up, and Hamilton slapped it right into the Georgia bench. Well, one thing's for certain, Davender cannot find and has not been able to find Chapman at all in that two-guard spot. Interesting that Chapman has yet to scratch. And Anderson has been bothered on the other end by Rex's defense. Five-second call the other way. Jim, you're going to look at two of the best defensive guards in the country. I know they've got reputations for being on good clubs, but Ed Davender and Patrick Hamilton may be as two good a defensive guards as you'll find on any basketball team around here. And they are very good at leading their team in that area. You just saw two instances of it. Fourth turnover for the Big Blue. Back in trouble again. Picked up his dribble, but found Hamilton. Anderson denied by Chapman. Bounds, it will belong to Georgia. The master blaster from Memphis, Tennessee, Richard Madison coming into the game, the senior that was involved in a near tragic accident on Christmas Eve along with Eric Manuel. Really fortunate to be alive. In fact, he told me that the first thing he remembered when he woke up, he was knocked out cold. And he remembered being in the ambulance and people saying, I I wonder if he still has feeling. He was very concerned for himself and now appreciates life a great deal more, as we all would. Yeah, absolutely. 
And of course, they lost LaRon Ellis also on Christmas Eve with that sprained ankle. He's going to be out for a couple of weeks. So Kentucky's been somewhat decimated by injuries here in the last couple of weeks. Not enough mistletoe in the blue in the blue heaven for Christmas time. Mack finds Anderson. There's Chapman in his face again. Force another turnover. Good job by Chapman that time to stay with Anderson. You got to remember these two guys played on the Pan Am team together last summer. And I asked Willie Anderson earlier this fall when I ran into him at the SEC media day. I said, who is the guy you enjoyed playing with more than anybody? He said Rex Chapman. <laughs> well, they know one another's moves by now. Davender, great hang time and a beautiful interior pass from Sir Rex. Boy, good look, good read, and a great reception there by Davender. Kentucky is burning it up through the net. Now four straight for Kentucky unanswered. And a three-pointer won't fall for Mack. Run down by Hamilton. Well, that's a great job by Hamilton to get to that basketball and get it back in. Kentucky's backed off of that pressure a little bit now. Hamilton is free. Oh, the iron unkind for Georgia on what is a neutral floor, and they've been criticized for moving this game here. Chapman puts it up and it falls. His first deuce, and we waited eight minutes for it. A little behind the back at midcourt, a little lofted shot, and here's Anderson with the answer. Yep. Me and my shadow. <laughs> I mean, these two guys have been on one another the entire game, and as soon as one scores, now the other finally breaks through. It's almost looking like looking into a mirror, you know? There they are again. Bennett, who scored the first six for Kentucky, has been denied the ball well. Locke forces one up and tips it through. How about that for a follow offensive rebound? Good tip in, good follow of his own shot by Rob Locke. Good effort. Tim, he's had a great December. He really is probably the most improved player on this Kentucky team. Really came of age against Indiana in that game at the Hoosier Dome earlier in the year that went to overtime. Kessler got his man airborne and made him pay. Well, you talk about playing a good ball game. How about that young man, Alec Kessler? Nine points now for Kessler. He has nine of the 15. Look at the defense now that Georgia's playing man to man. Look at the offside help. Chapman threw up a prayer. And he got fouled in the process by Willie Anderson. That's his first. Tim, you saw Rex's dad uh, coach a basketball game last year, <laughs> didn't you? Kentucky Wesleyan winning the Division II National Championship. Here's the move right here. You see Chapman take it. Anderson really got his body up in the air about the same time that Chapman did, and he fouled him as he let it go. I think Chapman was looking for the foul there and maybe forced that shot knowing he was going to get fouled. Interestingly, Wayne Chapman, his father, was preparing for that game, Larry, and he, all he could talk about was his son Rex on game day, and he's playing for the national title, so. I tell you, his dad was a great player at Western Kentucky. Played with a guy by the name of Clem Haskins. Mm -hmm. He's in Minnesota. Rod Cole is coming to the game now for Georgia. Two. Giving Tony Mack a blow. And we've got a timeout. Ten minutes and 49 seconds are left. It's 22-15 in the first half, Kentucky. Kentucky program defining excellence. Look at that. Most victories, the winning percentage, consecutive winning seasons, 32 NCAA appearances. They only used to put 32 teams in the NCAA tournament. That's how good they are. Timmy, there's Steve Reardon, really the uh, probably the biggest fan that Kentucky has. Attended 575 consecutive Kentucky basketball games. The man just absolutely loves University of Kentucky basketball. As probably about two and a half million other people. And Kaywood Ledford, truly one of the legends in his 35th year now as the radio voice of Kentucky, also has handled the NCAA tournament for many, many years. Truly a traditional school, UK, when it comes to college basketball. It's interesting about that. He was tied for sixth as the 35th year of the college basketball team. I wonder who the other five guys are. <laughs> That's right. Nice move by Hamilton, a solo. You know what happened? Davender ran into Manuel. He got hung up on the inside, and Davender's pointing to himself. He says, that's my man. I'll handle him. Eric Manuel just into the game, giving Bennett a blow. Locke is also out of the game, and 
Richard Madison, considered the best athlete perhaps by Eddie Sutton, is in the game. And there's a foul against Hamilton. And Hugh Durham will talk to Larry Ware and John Clockerty. Now, remember, there's a rule now that the officials can't come over and talk with, with coaches. Now, I wonder about that. A lot of officials have said that they would rather send one of the guys over to communicate with the coaches and let the other two just perhaps stay stay out of it during the course of the game. Well, I'll tell you what I've seen happen this year. I have seen a referee who wants to talk to a coach take the captain of the team over with him to the bench with the coach in earshot and tell the captain almost as if the captain is the translator for the referee to the coach so they can get the message to him. Perhaps one day they'll have a, a rule that a, a, an official can't nod when a coach addresses him. Yeah, because I, really, I believe that'll happen at some point. It's really a ridiculous rule. You ought to be able to talk to the official because you've got some situations you really have to get control of, particularly when you have a possibility of a fight. That's Cole off the back iron. Rod Cole run down nicely by Burdett, who finds Anderson, and very quickly Chapman is with him. Hamilton from the baseline extended. 24-19. Then we don't overplay or overstate this matchup at the guard position between these two teams, but I'll tell you, you won't find four better ones out there than these four right here. Gavinder again, and he's fouled by Hamilton. Well, that's a big foul right there. That's two in a row now that Hamilton's gotten against him. Watch Davinder start his drive right down the middle. Patrick Hamilton trying to stay up. Davinder got the good, quick first step, flew by him, and there's the tripping call right there. They called it blocking, but I think he tripped him. Hugh Durham's said enough. He's now shred his jacket. Davinder is free in the paint again. Rejected by Kessler. Chapman went up the back of Cole, and John Clockety saw it. Hugh works better without his, uh, without his sports coat. Well, the coat's off. The tie comes undone about 10 minutes into the second half. And then if we go into overtime, well, we got to go to black. <laughs> He really hasn't gotten the recognition. A lot of people in this league would tell you Hugh Durham is the most underpublicized great coach in college basketball. He was coach of the year, took a team that was decimated with academic difficulties in midseason and made them an NCAA team. Willie Anderson finally free for two, and it's 24-21. It's one of the few times Chapman hasn't hawked him or been right in his lap when he let one go, and now Kentucky with only a three-point lead. Here comes the Georgia crowd. Pick from Jenkins for Chapman. And he gets the shooter's touch. Tim, it's absolutely amazing. Anderson shoots the jumper. Chapman answers. The only time they're able to launch one. It's really a personal battle between the four guys in the perimeter right now. White Earth, Bat Masterson, gun at the OK Corral. Kessler again. Jenkins hauls it in. Now Kentucky with a six-point lead looks for its largest lead of the half. Madison loses it, but last touch by Kessler. Right here is what you do. You direct your players, and Chapman did right there with Jenkins getting the screen for him, and he got the roll. He got a lot of iron on that shot, but got it to roll in. It always seems the good shooters have got the good roll. Madison, Eric Burdett is free. Madison allows him the hoop, and it's 27-23. Well, that was an error by Madison. It was a good pass out to midcourt, and he lost it. Burdett took advantage of it. Davinder again with the penetration to the paint. Burdett clears it, and Georgia could cut it to two. Rod Cole with authority, and it's taken away by Chapman. What a play! Davinder is fouled by Patton. Jody Patton who just came into the game. Freshman from Tipton, Georgia. What a great defensive play by Rex Chapman. We've talked about his ability as a shooter, as a defender, but right there you saw a little bit of what he can do defensively. He can get up in the air, folks. I mean, way up. Owensboro, Owensboro Kentucky is a happy place because Rex Chapman's from there. The WBC Super Welterweight Championship is coming up in the elimination round, a special live edition at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday here on the Total Sports Network ESPN.
And we have seen some outstanding individual plays, and these teams are really beginning to find the rhythm of this game, and Hugh Durham's got to be happy to find that out. Look at the card comparison. That's really the story to this game. It really is, and as I said uh, earlier, right there you can see Hugh Durham with that crown look. Seems like he's had that for 20 years. You know, that's a man who's coached 21 years of college basketball and had 20 winning seasons. The only losing season he had was the first year he was at Florida State. And, of course, he went to the Final Four with Florida State in 72 as assistant Larry Gay was on that day. Chapman for three. Sir Rex may be taking over, and this is something that he does in the last seven to eight minutes of most halves, be it the first or the second. Nice pass inside, and Georgia comes right back with Tony Mack. And Mack made the good kick. It was a great pass by Willie Anderson. A good look on the backdoor cut. Georgia playing excellent offensive basketball to release that pressure. Kentucky's throwing at the defense. Every run has been answered by both clubs. Chapman is loose again. Tony Mack with the rebound. Boy, it's 6-5. He's a real space eater down low. Tim here, you get a good, good look at Kentucky's defense. They do give a lot of offside help. You see the ball moving to the left side. Anderson gives it to Max. He's up. Nice rebound inside. And a great return by Neville Austin, the freshman from St. Croix, Virgin Islands. Only in the game for a minute, and he's already delivered. 30 to 27. Good looking freshman. He's 6'10. Really hails from Auburn, Alabama. What came from St. Croix. Right. Bennett. Inside Madison. I tell you what, they were been the beneficiary of a very lucky play there because really Bennett was hung up and he was lucky to find Madison open. Winston Bennett has been quiet since the first four or five minutes of this game offensively. Well, Georgia continues to run their good offense. They're looking for that pressure release. Kentucky trying to get that defensive pressure up. Anderson with the baseline. Nope, and it won't fall. Back up again. Willie Anderson gets free. Now he does have. That size advantage once he takes his man down low. 32-29, six minutes left in the opening half. Tim Brando and Larry Connolly with you. We're happy, we're happy that you joined us. And if you're not joining us or some of your friends aren't, go get them because we've got a ball game. Yeah, it's going to get even better in the second half. Nice feed. Madison to Chapman. Going to count the goal. I think he's going to give him the goal, but he's got the charge. And that will be number two. On Rex Chapman. Tim, did you happen to see Chapman look down to see who was standing in front of him when he made that baseline move? He knew he was in the air. Now watch this. Watch him look down. Watch him look down. See him look down just before he let go of the basketball. He knew he was going to charge. There was nothing to, to do. And he looked right back up to the bench. He says, I've got to get this one because I know I'm going to get a charging foul. And he'll take uh, some time now to think about his foul and what's ahead of him in the second half. Our score right now, 34-29. Georgia got out to the quick lead, but Kentucky answered with seven unanswered, led by as many as seven points. But Georgia has been coming back. Every time they've been in a position to be blown away, Georgia has answered with the help, really, of Mack inside and the play of Hamilton outside. Anderson started to heat up a little bit too, though, Tim. He started to shoot the ball very well in the last eight minutes. Particularly the last two trips down the floor. Offensive board work's been pretty good in the case of Anderson. 34 30 hour score. A four point game, Kentucky with the lead. I would say on these two teams are probably four to five first round draft picks in the NBA before they finish up their college careers. Looking down low for Bennett. He wants the ball badly. Well, he's got Patton. He's got four inches on him. There's Lock. He forces it up. And wouldn't you know it, it dropped through. I don't know how in the world he got that ball to fall through. Eddie Sutton's wanting the foul. Boy, he is hot. 36-30. They earn those two points. And that's four now for Rob Lock. Anderson, baseline. He took Manuel to class. He said, let me show you how to do this, freshman. <laughs> well, with Chapman out of the game, you have to figure that Anderson realizes he must now flex his muscles. Chapman has 12 points for Kentucky, and he's on the pine right now. Cavender. Burgett clears it out to Tony Mack. 
Good job by Kentucky to get back on defense that time. Georgia had some numbers. Anderson with a quick first step to the hole. Chapman's out of the game, and Anderson's having a field day. Tim, he's an outstanding player. We've got a two-point game. And it's Willie Anderson, three out of the last four, trips down the floor. It's been Anderson. Bennett down low. And the foul. It'll be a two-point shot at the free throw line for Winston Bennett. He'll have two opportunities, and Rex Chapman will have to come back into the game. Eddie Sutton realized it just as quickly as Chapman knew he needed to get back in. Tim, that was good recognition that time by Kentucky. Yeah, they had Davender and Anderson out there, and Davender dropped the ball to the inside to Bennett, who had a shorter player, Jody Patton, on the inside. Patton can't guard him at 6'4". Bennett 6'7", and much stronger physically in there, and Bennett took it right to the hole and drew the foul. Reggie Hansen has exited, and Hugh Durham now realizes Chapman is back, and that may now prohibit the play offensively of Willie Anderson. We'll see. You know, oftentimes when you've got a good basketball team, you draw plays up and you, you run your option. Well, that was a terrible shot by Bennett right there. It was like it even hit the rim. Yeah. He'll hear from that uh, for a few weeks, maybe months to come. You see that incredulous look that Sutton had on his face when he turned around and saw how he'd shot it? I mean, this is a guy that's shooting only 66% from the free throw line, but he can get it up there. Now, Winston Bennett will hear that not only from Georgia fans the rest of the way, but from his teammates the rest of his career. Tim, this is where experience really takes over. Willie Anderson, the senior, the Pan Am team member, really gets Manuel hung up on his screen there. His own man, Jenkins, got him. He went baseline, a little bit of a pump fake right there. Manuel could do nothing but watch him shoot it into the bottom of the net. Good move by Willie Anderson against the freshman, Manuel. He has become a force in the last four minutes. Now, granted, during that span of time, Hanscom was in the game, Reggie Hanson, and not Rex Chapman. There is a difference. And he, he made good use of the time with Chapman on the pine. Well, but you got to understand, too, that Hanson was not on him, that they had shifted Manuel right. over to guard him, and Hanson was really the guy I think maybe that he should have on him because he has a little bit more size. Four minutes left. And, of course, coming up at halftime, we'll have Bob Lee. We'll have scores and highlights from throughout the country. Hit out of the Big East at home against Florida today. More on Hershey Hawkins, and there's Jody Patton, who definitely has a three-point aerial within his repertoire. And it's 37-37 now, and the Georgia fans love it. Jenkins is loose. Kessler clears it. Willie Anderson looking to run. That's a good shot by Jenkins. He's got to throw that one up. I mean, if you move and you're open from eight feet, you've got to take it. Georgia being very patient on offense this time. They'd like to get this lead. Push off offense. Yep. And there goes an opportunity to take the lead. And anytime you're Hugh Durham, and this is technically a home building for him. Watch it again. You'll see Burdett right here. Watch him get Jenkins. Just kind of push off a little bit to get to the inside. Well, I see that happen so often. A guy gets that inside play and the pass comes in, and it's almost a natural reaction to want to push the defender away from him. Yep. The point I was about to make was that anytime you have an opportunity to take the lead this late in a half, and Kentucky's not at Rupp Arena, you need to get that lead. And there you see from the floor, Kentucky really shooting lights out, 71%. Wait a minute. John Flockerty says, no, this is Rob Locks, not Jenkins. In fact, I cleared that up in a hurry. They like to see that, though. Communication oh, yeah. between the officials. Absolutely. Well, they've got the right guy. It was Jenkins that was pushed off. There's a little bit of a difference in look between Jenkins and Locks. Yeah. <laughs> it won't fall. Willie Anderson, Eddie Sutton said this about him. You can't let him penetrate because he's like Magic Johnson when he gets inside the paint. That is respect. That's from a good, Eddie that is a good parallel. He's a very similar type player. And he forced the foul by Chapman. That's his third. He better get him out of there. He's going to have to sit down the rest of this half. I wouldn't let him play with three fouls. 
Well, that ruins this scenario. Rex Chapman, who usually finishes a, with a flurry in, in every half, be it the first half or the second half, may not be around at the end of this half. Tim, that is three fouls on him, isn't it? And remember, we're not at Rupp Arena, so if he leaves him in, this is a big gamble by Eddie Sutton, particularly if he has to cover Anderson. Now, he's going to change now. I thought maybe he was going to leave him in. He started back to his seat, but here comes Manuel now in to replace him. 39-37, the first lead for Georgia since it was 3-0. Stack offense by Kentucky down low inside. Davender one-on-one. Nice move. And easy. Tim, he is so hard to stop. He has so many moves. 39-39, our score. With two and a half left in the half. Chapman's got to be very careful. He doesn't want to draw that fourth. I wonder if Anderson knows that. You think he knows he's got three? Well, he's forced most of those fouls. You'd think he would. Clear out. Clear out for Anderson. Yep. Here he goes. Chapman. Oh, nice defense considering the circumstances, but Alec Kessler puts it down. Chapman had to back off. Anderson had a shot. Threw up a bad one, and Kessler with a good follow-up. Well, he's had a great first half. Pretty good help side defense, which Eddie Sutton teaches as well. Rex Chapman getting the roll with a beautiful, beautiful move along the baseline. How about that pass fake to Davender to get Anderson leaning that way and then came right back and got the roll off of the iron. Rex has 14 now. Tony Mack with an attack from three. 44-41. You know, this was a guy that was the high school player of the year when he came out of high school and was a teammate of Dwayne Chinsett, the center of the University of Florida. What kind of high school team do you think they had? Chapman, he's fouled by Willie Anderson. Now, this has been a very defensive-oriented game for this many points to have been scored. Watch again. Now, watch Rex Chapman on the baseline right here. You see him down low. Anderson on top right there with Locke. Watch him make the break to the corner. Good move. He receives the pass. Anderson almost with a steal. He goes baseline, looks back. Good fake. He got Anderson in the air. Hang time. Roll. Count it. That's why you leave him in the game. I think maybe right now Eddie Sutton's lucky he didn't replace him. He's gotten a couple of baskets already just staying in there. What a chance to add to it with some free throws. Eddie Sutton, whose team is unbeaten, has used a number of substitutes throughout the course of this first half. Now trails by one. Georgia with the lead, 44-43 with 1.16 to play, and Eric Manuel does come in for Rex Chapman now. And only after four more points were scored by Sir Rex. Really makes Sutton look good, doesn't it? All of a sudden, he's a coaching genius. Yeah. Couldn't get Manuel in the game because there was no dead ball. <laughs> It's a simple game, right? Good good ball movement right now by Georgia. They're just kind of running some clock. But, I mean, we've had 87 points scored in this half, and it's been a great defensive game. It really has. I mean, both teams are playing right at their peak right now. Ten seconds on the shot clock. For the first time they're using it, no Blakely now will penetrate, and it's knocked away. Foul, Davender. Eddie Sutton doesn't like that at all. Well, I'll tell you something, Tim. That was a tough break for Eddie Sutton and the Kentucky Wildcats because Blakely threw up a prayer there, and I don't think that shot had a chance of going no, in. You're right. And they could have gotten it and gone the other way and gotten the last shot of this first half. Watch you make the move. No question about the foul. He got him right on the arm. Maybe that was the reason it had no chance to go in. <laughs> The arms are so quick, though, you really can't tell without the benefit of the replay. The shot clock not a factor now. 34 seconds remaining. 44-43, Georgia with a one-point lead. I got to dump into Bennett or Locke or Davinger one-on-one. -on -one. Take your pick. Well, you really went out on the limb there. <laughs> There's only five out there. I got three of them covered. Good pressure defense by Georgia. Oh, they almost got the five-second count. Look at the trap. 
Good defensive work by Turin. Good idea right here. Go out and press him. Go after him. It is Davinder one-on-one. Jody Patton staying right with him. Cutting off the lane. Air ball. And at the buzzer. It drew little iron, if any. Eddie Sutton's team, the second-ranked and unbeaten Wildcats, may be in for a war in the Omni, which has turned into a doghouse. 45-43, let's get to Bob Lee. Thank you, Tim and Larry. If that's any indication, that first half of what we're in for tonight, it's going to be quite an evening, because after this game, we're going to the Palestra in Philadelphia for the Notre Dame LaSalle game. Then we're heading on at about 11.30 Eastern time to Albuquerque to the pit. We'll see if number one Arizona can get past New Mexico tonight. What a day it has been in the top 20. Number eight Florida going into Pittsburgh, taking on the number three Pitt team. And this was quite a game and also quite a day for Pittsburgh. We'll have the news in just a moment. The game highlights Panthers dominating. Dwayne Shinsius misses the turnaround. Sean Miller with a rebound. Looking for Charles Smith and finding him. Shinsius was backdoored on that one, 30 for Smith, and Panthers by seven at halftime. The Gators made it a four-point game, but Norm Sloan's team did not get a great game from Shinsius. One of 12 from the floor, blows the jam. Smith's got the rebound. Jerome Lane only had three points today, but 21 rebounds, and there are two of the points. Pitt building a 20-point advantage. Now late in the game, Pitt is just blowing away the Gators. Shades of the Duke game for the Gators. Shinsius with a miss. Jerome Lane, one of those rebounds to Daryl Porter. Charles Smith, 80 to 68. The final score. Pitt is now 9 and 0. However, the big news on the day: Rod Brooken, the number two score for Pitt, academically ineligible for the balance of the season. It is the second player that Paul Evans has lost to grades this year. Mike Goodson, who had started all the games last year, led the team in assists last year, not playing this year because of grades. Brooken is out. Pitt is now 9 and 0. It's their best start since they went 12 and 0 to start the season back in 1929. Paulie Pavilion, has, the mystique really just hangs from the rafters. It really doesn't permeate the floor anymore because UCLA is a losing ball team, and UNC today went in there, and the heels did a number. It was a tight game. J.R. Reed from Jeff Lebo, and it was a four-point Tar Heel lead over Walt Hazard's squad at halftime. Now in the second half, Dave Immel, who had 25, gets the contact and the foul. Carolina only up by a point, but they come right back to Ranzino Smith. Three-pointer. And a six-point Tar Heel lead. Bruins just wouldn't quit. Butler to Greg Jackson. Still a one-point game, but J.R. Reed was the difference in this game. Look at this little soft-touch move. And the contact in the lane, a seven-point victory. Carolina is now 9-1 on the season today. J.R. Reed was 9-11 of 11 from the floor. Of the 25 points that Dave Immel had for UCLA was a career best. We're at halftime of quite a dogfight between the Cats and the Dogs in the Omni. Kentucky, number two in the country, undefeated, trailing at halftime. More highlights, more scores in a moment. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Kentucky and Georgia. Brought to you by the financial professionals at Payne Weber and by Diet Coke. Enjoy Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. Kentucky, number two in the country, trailing by two at halftime against Georgia, 45-43. Welcome back. I'm Bob Lee. Game one of our three live games tonight. Let's continue to check out what was happening today. A very tight game in Chicago. Bradley visiting the Ramblers of Loyola, but uh, never bashful. Bradley likes to score points, and Stan Albeck's team was down by seven, but then Hersey Hawkins, the nation's leading scorer, goes to work. Bombing from three-point country. He had 26 field goal attempts today. He connected on 10. Half of those were from three-point land. Hawkins at 27. Bradley leading it by seven. They were able to hold on down the stretch. Anthony Manuel had 37 points. 31 of them in the second half. Three of those right there. The final was 99 to 82. Gene Sullivan's team losing today at home. Bradley continues bucking once again for a top 20 ranking. The Hartford Hawks might be the best 2-8 and team in the country. They stormed out today against DePaul and took a 12-2 lead, but DePaul themselves a very good team this year. On the road in Hartford, Connecticut. And look at these highlights. Rod Strickland has it here stolen by Mike Daniel. And Hartford continues to lead this game 21-18. Now we're in the second half when Strickland will drop it for Kevin Golden, who finds Kevin Edwards just outside that lovely three-point arc. Blue Demons up by three. And then Strickland will drive here and find Edwards. Hartford going for the upset. It wasn't about to happen. It was a tight game. 68-61 as DePaul wins it. 
fall just by one at halftime. And DePaul next Saturday will be taking on Georgetown in that action next weekend. Taking other scores from this evening and this afternoon in the Atlantic 10, St. Joe's by five over Rutgers. Rodney Blake blocked 11, uh, eight shots. He had 11 rebounds today. He and Brian Leahy each had 16 points. St. Joe's is now four and six. William and Mary with its first victory over a Division I opponent over Loyola by three today. Mark Batzel had a career high 25 points. Maryland got the first ACC victory of Coach Bob Wade's coaching career last year. They were skunked in conference. Today they win it. In the conference opener, Derek Lewis had some 21 points. Ohio State winning a tough one against the Chippewas of Central Michigan. A buzzer tip by Perry Carter deciding this game. Jay Burson had 26 and Tommy Johnson 45 in a losing effort for Central Michigan. West Virginia is now 6-0. Also Southern Illinois with a loss today. Evansville with that victory 91-77. to Other scores to report today from around the country. As we continue to check the scores today, West Virginia, as we said, with the victory over Penn State, 64-51. We are at halftime. We've got a two-point game. Kentucky's 8-0 on the season, and Georgia with that great backcourt giving them what for in the Omni. Ostensibly a neutral court, but the dogs have got their partisans on hand. A reminder, coming along right after this game, we go to the Palestra, Notre Dame, and LaSalle right after Sports Center, number one Arizona. It's never easy to play in the pit. We'll see it live tonight, 1130 Eastern Time. And before back to Atlanta, more scores. SMU is now 11-2. Mustangs blow out uh, Morgan State today. Todd Alexander had 23 points. Charlotte, the site for the game between South Carolina and Davidson, a two-point game early in that affair. Villanova leads Virginia at the half by four points. Duquesne has the early one-point lead on Iona. Fairfield is getting its ears pinned back by Lehigh. That is in the first half. Engineers up big. Georgia Tech leading 15-8 to eight over George Washington. Now an update, a nine-point lead for Georgia Tech. Cleveland State and Bowling Green, a one-point game. And North Carolina, Charlotte, and Jacksonville are in a tight game. That one is early. We've got a tight one, a two-point game. Let's now get back to Tim Brando and Larry Conley. Those numbers tell quite a story. Georgia in the lead, Tim. Thank you, Bob Lee. Kentucky right now trailing by 245-43. It has easily been the best game these four eyes have seen. The four eyes belonging to Larry Conley and yours truly. And really, a stalemate the first eight minutes between the two guards, Anderson and Chapman. Then all of a sudden, both of them were like a cannon shot. And that 28 points scored by both. 16 for Chapman and 12 for Anderson. Tim, they were. They were both very quiet. We're going to watch a little bit of the highlights of the first half of these two outstanding guards who played on the Pan Am team this summer. Watch Chapman make that move. Good fake pass to get Anderson in the air. Then he comes back baseline, hangs in the air, gets the roll. That shows you some of his athletic ability inside. Now watch him direct traffic on the outside. Cedric Jenkins, right there. Stand right there so I can get around you for my jump shot. And he does. He goes straight up and buries it from the outside. He's a great player inside and outside. Now let's go to the other side. Georgia Bulldogs, Willie Anderson. Not only can he shoot, watch him pass the ball. Is this a great pass? Look at the hands go by there. Gets it inside, Mack takes it up and lays it in. Great pass from Willie Anderson, one of his assists. You saw the baseline move by Chapman earlier. Watch Anderson's baseline move. He not only comes back, takes the shot, gets Chapman up in the air, but watch him follow his own shot. Just great fundamental basketball on the part of both of these outstanding guards. And they truly have been the keys to their team. Look at that. Chapman with 16, Anderson 12. Rebounds, how many of them had they have an opportunity to get? Not many. Two and one there. Assists virtually even, though the big ones really went to Anderson when Georgia was down by seven points and they were able to claw back into it. And the fouls, that's a concern. Chapman has three, and that could hurt Eddie Sutton down the stretch because Rex Chapman has had a tendency in the last four or five minutes of every game, Larry, to just take over, move Davender out of the way, become the point guard, and negotiate Kentucky to a victory. He's done it three times at Rupp Arena this year. Yeah, and if Chapman goes out of the basketball game, you can look for Coach Eddie Sutton to move Davender into that lead guard position, let him handle the basketball. His own son, Sean Sutton, comes off the bench. He can give him a good six or eight minutes of playing time and maybe give him enough time so they can get Chapman back in the game. Yeah, Georgia looks like a team that's lost four games, right? <laughs> yeah, welcome to the Southeastern Conference, folks. Georgia and Kentucky and the fans of all ages are loving it at halftime. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Kentucky and Georgia. Brought to you by the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. And by Dodge Cars and Trucks. 
For performance on road and off, it's got to be a Dodge. The first of three games on ESPN has not disappointed to this point. At halftime, Georgia leading Kentucky 45-43. Tim Brando and Larry Conley at the Omni. And statistically, Larry, this game has been remarkably so well played. How would you like to be down to playing a road game and shooting 68%? <laughs> it's tough to do. And from three-point range, now remember, Chapman has a lot to do with that. Two for four for Kentucky, and the dogs are at 33%. From the line, virtually a stalemate there. Much as the score of this game, and on the boards, not many to get because of the shooting percentages. Uh, Eddie Sutton's very happy to get eight rebounds when he's shooting 68%. Turnovers, and that's forced by quality defense in a game that has been augmented by outstanding offensive play by individuals. Six for both teams. And that's not too bad for two coaches that are just beginning the Southeastern Conference campaign. Rex Chapman playing with three fouls will certainly be the focal point of Hugh Durham. And Willie Anderson will be the man that could be responsible for forcing a fourth foul on Chapman early. We'll wait and see what defense Eddie Sutton decides to go with. Chapman for three. Off the front iron. Anderson, his counterpart, clears it. Hamilton at the spot. Bennett with the rebound for Kentucky. Not a very good start for either club. They came out and shot 15 and 22 footers respectively and uh, didn't get either one of them to go through. Georgia with a two point lead now. The Kentucky's going to try to attack. Looks like Chapman and Devin are going to play a little 1 1 game. Locke was there for a moment. Jenkins couldn't catch him. Now Rob feeds for Davenu. Knocks around, cleared by Jenkins. Chapman. How about that for a floater? They've taken three shots. Davener missed one. Chapman's missed two, but he got that one. And we're tied at 45. Burdett really came of age last year along about midseason. Oh, nice pass. pass. Kessler. You know what happened there? Jenkins and Bennett were not helping. Kentucky looks asleep at the switch starting this second half. They're not out there playing as aggressively as they were in the first half. He got by Locke, who came in to help, and the bounce pass into Kessler got the best. Alec Kessler has his average 13 points for the Georgia Bulldogs. And there's a foul against him, fronting Rob Locke. Larry Ware they there to make the call, and that's the second against Kessler. Sophomore from Roswell, Georgia. Really does have a good perimeter shot for a man his size. He can go out 12 to 15 feet and bury it. Bennett off the inbound. Bennett started hot the first half. He got the first six points Kentucky had, and now he started out the second half and gotten a field goal to start for Kentucky. Anderson has such a quick first step. You almost have to play off him, even if you're Chapman. Great pass. Burdett to Anderson. Chapman went for the steal. He got burned, and Anderson took it baseline and went up over Davender. 14 now for Willie Anderson. You know, Tim, from a strategy standpoint, from coaching, there's not a whole lot you can do. You just throw these guys out on the floor, give them their offenses, and let them play. And right now, Georgia's getting the better of them. The changing defenses is about all you can do, and both of these are masters at that. Watch Anderson beat Chapman to the spot right here. If you're going to play defense against Willie Anderson, you've got to beat him to that spot. Anderson got there. Chapman tried to steal, missed it. He took it in and shot it right over to Avender. Meanwhile, Anderson with another feed, this time to Burdett. Rob Locke was there, and he picked up the foul. That could be three on Rob Locke. Eddie Sutton now may have some foul difficulty to deal with. Georgia, they have just been dominant when they've had the early lead, and that, of course, includes halftime. And they've been uh, abysmal when they've been down. It's been difficult for them to come from behind. You know, they, had, they had an interesting December, Tim. They went over to Japan and Hawaii and played, and, and Virginia absolutely dismantled them. I mean, they beat them badly. Then they turned around and came back, and you'd think after a beating like that, did you be somewhat uh, down? They came back and played Oklahoma to a three-point game and held the club as averaging about 115 points a game to 93. Burdett, who's a 73% free-throw shooter, missed them both. 
Both teams had been shooting well, both from the line and from the floor. So the dogs missed a golden opportunity. Davender, his pass actually hit Kessler in the face. No foul. Hamilton, right off the front iron. Tough miss right there. Davender. Willie Anderson going for it, and another foul against Rob Locke. Davender or Locke, it will be Davender that gets the call. Davender gets his second rather than Locke, but boy, was he in position to pick up his fourth. Eddie Sutton quickly lobbying for Locke not to pick up the fourth. Tim, you get the feeling Kentucky's playing a little out of control right now. I think they started the second half. Defensively, they were asleep at the switch earlier, and now offensively, I think they're really taking some very poor shots right now, very poor shot selection. Well, you get the feeling Georgia wants the ball, but perhaps Kentucky, right on cue, comes through. Cavender misses a chance. Well, both teams have had snowbirds and failed. Anderson. The outstanding shooting percentages in the first half are affecting the team's abilities on the offensive end, perhaps, Larry. Not a good shot there by Tony Mack. I think both clubs have started out very rusty here in the second half. We played almost four minutes of basketball, and it's not anywhere near what we saw in the first half. Avender off the back iron. Bennett. Jenkins. There's the domination in the paint for Kentucky in the foul. They are taller. And there are more of them for the Wildcats. Well, they only got eight rebounds in the first half, and I think they got about half that total in this series right here. Good move by Jenkins to come up. You see the foul committed on the backside. Bennett and Jenkins working that board pretty hard. Cedric Jenkins. 100% from the line. He's not missed. He has a Baker's dozen in 87. He's one for one in 88. Jenkins, one of the three players Kentucky has on its squad from the state of Georgia. You don't get as many, though, from that state as Kentucky once did. And that's pretty much true throughout the SEC. 49-48. Mack. Really Anderson. by Anderson again. 51-48. It's a three-point game. Him. You can see why he's so valuable. He had four assists in the first half, and he just gave you a great pass right there. Good pass by Chapman. Davender, count it, and the foul against Tony Mack. Folks, I'll tell you what, if you miss a play on one end of the court, just sit still for about 10 seconds because you're going to see it on the other end. Look at Hugh Durham. He's not praying, folks, but he wishes he could get rid of this basket right here. Good move, good pass by Chapman to Davender. Hung in the air, drew the foul from Mack, and got the basket. Yeah, I got it. New look for Ed Davender. The goggles are in in 88. Well, every time the ball is loose on the floor, it's a struggle. Anderson, a little give and go action from Hamilton. Winston Bennett clears it. 51-50, Georgia with the lead by one. Chapman. Great fake. He got Anderson and he burned him. Went right and came straight up with a jumper. We've almost played five minutes of the second half. Burdett loses it. Good pass. It was in his hands. He just fumbled it. Now Kentucky's got a chance to go up by three. Well, you get the feeling when he gets his hands on the ball, something exciting is going to happen. Bennett to lock on the baseline. Burdett keeping it alive and another foul. Winston Bennett was involved in that fray. Watch it again right here. Watch Chapman make this move on Anderson. This is two plays ago. Good pump fake to get Anderson in the air. Go left, go up, and knock it in the bottom. Hook, and he shoot the basketball. Hook. But remember, Winston Bennett just picked up his third. Foul difficulty could be effective. And don't forget, coming up next, Notre Dame and LaSalle. 
Jim Kelly and the governor, Bill Raftery, are standing by to bring you that one. Sports Center follows with Eric Clemens and John Saunders. The number one Arizona at the pit in Albuquerque to take on New Mexico at 11.30 Eastern time. The governor? Yeah, we call him the governor. Oh, okay. He knows everyone in every state. 52-51, <laughs> Kentucky with the lead. Kentucky's changed defense now. They've gone to a zone. Kessler, nice move by Tony Mack to keep it alive, but Davender brings it out of there. Now the numbers game for Bennett. Yeah, that was great action. Davender got in heavy, thick problems at midcourt, got out of it, got the ball to the left side, and Bennett canned it. Kentucky's going to go back to that zone defense. They're going to stay with that zone. Force Georgia to shoot some from the outside. Three players with three fouls, perhaps, leading to that move. Inside Burdett. Intimidated a bit. I think it's a combination of things. Yes, I think it's because of the foul situation Kentucky's involved in, but I also think they want to force Georgia to shoot a little bit from the outside. Georgia's getting an awful lot of easy layups on it. But Jenkins handling the ball outside. Burdett fouled by Jenkins. That's a frustration foul, his second. He handled the ball very well out there, though. You don't expect that from him. Well, he's not an Ed Davner or Rex Chapman, but he handled that one pretty well. The end result was not very good. He just couldn't get the ball to go through. Excellent move. He just didn't finish it well enough, and he commits the foul right there. 13-30 left. The Wildcats by three. Jim, I think it's a good move by Eddie Sutton going to this zone defense. He's going to force Georgia to do some things outside, make them shoot that three-point goal. they got a couple of pretty good guys, but Kentucky's got great defensive players out front in Davender and Chapman with good quick hands. As exhibited by Ed Davender, Richard Madison will come into the game. Cedric Jenkins will get a blow. They do have that depth along the front line, and with the pace of this game, you have to wonder, even though Kentucky is in some foul difficulty, could that be a real problem for Georgia down the stretch run? Yeah, take a look at that zone defense right there. You see the moving ball side to ball side. There's the shot, three-pointer. Rob Lock with the rebound. You see how that change in tempo has caused Georgia some problems? Now, they've missed three shots in a row. Now, look at Georgia. Still going to stay with that man-to-man -man defense, and Kentucky's going to line up on that stack. Watch Chapman break out and get it. They'll try to work at the Davender or Chapman one-on-one. Davender from Chapman. Tim, they look for each other. They complement each other so very well. The five-point game again now. A 6 nothing spurt for the Wildcats. Burdett is loose, but Locke is just too tall. Hamilton is free, and he charges. Nice work by Rob Locke down around the paint. I want to tell you what, Hamilton shoved this one into third gear. When he hit that baseline, he was moving. Locke, good defensive position. He went right into it. What Chapman earlier. Look at this pass to Davender. He saw the help coming by Hamilton, got it to Anderson, who couldn't recover, got it past Anderson, who got it to Davender, and he got it up and in. Good work by Chapman. Georgia has missed their last five shots, and if Kentucky converts here, you have to wonder if Durham will call a timeout. Winston Bennett with the putback, and he's fouled. You know, it might be a good time for a timeout for Georgia. Yep good time for it right now because what they've got is a situation where it's getting a little out of control offensively. They've missed their last five shots. They just kept off this one up. Kessler was battling Mack on the inside. There's the foul committed right there by Eric Burdett against Bennett. Burdett has done well in getting the ball on the offensive end off the offensive glass, but he's just not tall enough, Larry. And, and Locke and Jenkins, those big arms, just no way that Eric Burdett at 6'8 can handle it. You think we'd be talking about a guy 6'8 not being big enough? Yeah. But in, in this case, it's true because we've got three of them down there. Exactly. Boy, has the look of Kentucky changed in a year's time. Winston Bennett doesn't hurt, and neither does Sir Rex. Durham's got a problem. ESPN means Big Monday, every Monday, and it premieres this year, this Monday. Villanova and St. John's out of the Big East, and the Big Ten back half of that twin bill, Purdue and Illinois. Can't get much better than that, but in Georgia, they're beginning to love their hoops as well. 
Tim, I got to tell you a funny story. I clipped out of the editorial section of the Atlanta Constitution a couple of weeks ago. A fellow by the name of Conley Ingram, who practices law and is in retirement from the Georgia Supreme Court, told an interesting story. I think it may be stretching athletic stories somewhat, but he indicated that when Oglethorpe discovered Georgia several centuries ago, he walked on the beach, planted his staff, and said, I claim this land in the name of the king. We'll call it Georgia, and their athletic teams will be the Bulldogs. <laughs> what a correlation. Is that stretching it yeah. a little bit? And a foul on the inbound pass. Hamilton pinching that double team. And the foul on Madison, his first. There you see the foul difficulty. Kentucky, all three of those with three. And if either of those could come up with a fourth with this much time remaining, it could change the complexion of the game. Now look at that zone defense Kentucky's thrown up. It looks like a 1-2-2. Two, two. They're matching up a little bit out of it. You see Chapman almost bumping a little bit there. Trying to avoid that fourth one. Good move by Mack. Kessler. And again, the trees of Kentucky are there. Madison this time with authority rips it down. You know, you talk about the disadvantage of putting his own defense and it's rebounding, but it actually helps you gather a number of bodies in there. They're around. There's no checkoff responsibility, but Kentucky's been able to get a lot of defensive rebounds in the last three minutes. Lock. When he puts it on the floor, he gets in trouble. Davender follows. He got saved that time because they almost took it away from him inside when he put it on that floor. Locke has a bad habit of putting that ball on the floor in heavy traffic. 60 to 51 hour score, a nine point cushion now for Kentucky. Their largest lead of the game. They led by seven at one time in the first half. Hamilton for three. Now that'll bust his own defense open. You're going to have to come out and play him if he's going to shoot that well. 60 to 54. The three-pointer puts Georgia within three hoops of tying the game again. He's in trouble. Chapman gets it past Mack. Knocked away. Last touch by Georgia, and Kentucky will have it. Georgia has not deviated from their defense all night long. They've basically stayed with their man-to-man. -man. But this Kentucky zone defense, I think, has really been responsible for them having this surge since they went to that matchup zone. It's really caused Georgia a lot of problems. Chapman really beat Anderson. Take it down the lane and lay it up. Oh, what a move. 22 for Rex Chapman. 62-54. Doesn't this normally mean that it's time for Anderson to create on the offensive end for Georgia? You called it. Well, there's a foul, a charge. He forced the issue. That's the third foul on Willie Anderson. Let's watch the Anderson-Chapman confrontation. Boy, Chapman really with a great long stride, the good layup. Watch the other end. Anderson right here with a charging foul. Good defensive position again by Locke to take that charge. Willie Anderson again picked up that foul. What a great matchup. What a tremendous matchup of guards in this basketball game. Knocked away by Hamilton. Right, Eddie Sutton says, fellas, now be more careful with the ball. Protect it a bit. We've got an eight-point lead with just over ten minutes to play. I don't think he's that quite that docile. I think he may be a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> A little more emphatic than that. This is the largest lead of the game for Kentucky. Kessler knocking it away. Bennett, and it's a tie ball. Between Kessler and Bennett, the arrow pointing in the direction of Georgia. So the Bulldogs get it. Kessler, I'm impressed with him, Larry. Even though Kentucky's domination on the offensive boards has been key in this second half, Kessler has been a one-man band down there for Georgia. Well, they've gotten the ball to the inside, and when they get it to him in there, he knows what to do with it. He's very excellent on his moves. He gets around, and watch him moving that paint. See him moving around, asking for the basketball. Hamilton for three. Two in a row from there. The junior from Gainesville, Georgia. Has the last six points now for the dog. Chapman. It's like clear out, I'm taking over. 64-57. Hamilton spots up for three again. Anderson keeping it alive. Madison with a little Marcus Haynes act to clear it to Davender. Good move by Ed Davender. The senior leadership there showing itself. He pulled it back out. Said, let's set it up and get us a good one. How about Madison keeping that dribble alive down low off the rebound? Not bad. Chapman. 
Got his fourth? Yep. And it happens with nine minutes left in the game. And Eddie Sutton has a major decision to make. Not that Chapman should stay in or come out, but who do you bring in for him? Well, you got to bring Manuel in. He'd be the one guy you'd have to put in there, especially for defensive purposes. Good job of Hamilton to get in there and throw that charge from Chapman. You know, the thing about him, Tim, is he has so much natural ability. I think he loves to play the game, and sometimes he forgets about the strategy involved, mm -hmm. where he is in relationship to what the score is. He just loves to play the game. And you saw Sutton getting manual. He'll check in in the next dead ball. Anderson for three. Push. And a push off by Madison. That's his second. You and I could have made that call. We were sitting here watching it. He had his hands right in the middle of his back. Richard Madison with a foul. Remember it, folks, with 8.46 left, Rex Chapman forced to leave the game. Bennett playing with three, and Locke is playing with three. Now, what you could do here is change your strategy a little bit. You've been pressing the ball into the inside, and Kentucky may now decide to milk that shot clock a little bit until they can get Chapman back into the game. Georgia, on the other hand, needs to put pressure on uh, Kentucky's offense. Jody Patton has come into the game now. Georgia in the backcourt, who played rather well in the first half. Does have the three-point range that Hugh Durham likes. It's an interesting strategic move there. Chapman goes out of the game, and Durham immediately takes Anderson out of the game mm -hmm. to give him a blow. Maybe when they come back, they come back together. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Something tells me Anderson gets in, but you never know. Madison wants it. Outlets the manual. Out of bounds. Last touch by Winston Bennett. Eddie Sutton not happy with a shot selection by Manuel that time. I didn't think it was that bad a shot. I thought it was a pretty good baseline open jump shot. There's Willie Anderson. He's had a difficult night tonight. He's played awfully well, but he's had to guard Rex Chapman, and that's been a full-time job. He may have asked you for the blow. <laughs> Guess what? Does have good range. Hamilton, great pass inside. Neville Austin can't get it to go down. Stolen by Davender. Kentucky with a three on two. Davender. Jimmy just takes over. Chapman goes out of the basketball game. He just showed you a leadership move. He took the ball the length of the floor after the steal and laid it in. Excellent move by Ed Davenport. And he has 18 points now. Three men in double figures now for the Wildcats. Boston missed one earlier. He has the ball. Good pass and Davenport with a steal again. He's blowing and going. Fouled by Austin. Boy, Davenport, when he gets up that breath, like a locomotive coming down the lane. You know, we talk about these two guards so much, and Ed Davender really is a great compliment to uh, Rex Chapman, but watch him take this ball to the inside, knowing Chapman's on that bench. He feels that responsibility of carrying this club right now, and he took it the length of the floor as he did earlier. Didn't get the result there that he did earlier. He really puts the afterburners on along about mid-court. Well, he's deceptively yeah. quick. I mean, you look at him, you don't think, well, he's 6'2", and yeah, he moves all right, and then all of a sudden, boom, he's gone from you, and he's laying up. And the NBA loves him, not only because of his offensive skills, but because he loves to play defense. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and that's the thing that's nice about him, and he can pass the ball. He does a little bit of everything. I think to play in the NBA, though, he's going to have to get a little bit more weight on him. He needs about another 8 to 10 pounds. He can handle that. Derek Kersey is coming to the game now for Georgia. Giving Alec Kessler a blow. Jenkins is back in now for Kentucky. And wholesale substitutions continue now with Rod Cole coming in the game for Georgia. So at a very key time, both teams making mass substitutions. You know, it's a good opportunity right now for Coach Durham and Coach Sutton to get guys in there who are a little bit fresher and maybe get their veterans back in there in the final four minutes of play. It's 68-59, the largest lead of the game for the Big Blue, and that's with Chapman out of the game. Brando and Larry Conley back at the Omni in Atlanta. Our score, Kentucky 68, Georgia 59. An outstanding game from end to end, and here's the reason why. Watch this move by Chapman. Hamilton almost with a steal right beyond midcourt there. Now watch this move right inside. It gets by Anderson, it gets by Mack, lays it up and in. 
Jim, that's just taking advantage of what the defense gives you. Talk about defense. Watch this swipe right here by Ed Davender. Kessler lost it. Davender got it. Watch him take it to the other end. We talked about the two guards complimenting each other. Watch Davender make this move. Boy, these two guys are as good as you're going to find. Rex Chapman still on the pine with four fouls. He left with just under nine minutes to play. Hamilton with the air ball taken out of there by Manuel. Now Kentucky can go up by double digits. And mentally, that could be very difficult for the dogs to take. Well, Hamilton's really hawking Davender now. To go up 11 with Chapman not playing, that would be tough for Georgia. And there's Bennett along the baseline. And it's tapped around, finally cleared by Cole, Rod Cole. Now Georgia with a chance. They got to start scoring now, Tim. They've got Chapman on the bench, Kentucky does, and Georgia's got to do something against this Kentucky zone defense. And Willie Anderson is back in the game for Georgia after the timeout. Oh! Anderson can shoot the three-point shot. Drive away in any new or used car from... <laughs> Second-ranked Kentucky has been pushed by North Carolina Charlotte, Louisville at home, and certainly Indiana in the game at the Hoosier Dome. They've been pushed again tonight, but right now, with their star on the bench, they are proving that they are worthy of the second ranking. And there's a foul on Burdett. I'm going to tell you what, right there, Madison was playing Burdett would foul him because he cannot handle the basketball that far out. Assistant coach Rex Chapman, ladies and gentlemen son of Wayne, the head coach in Kentucky Wesleyan. And Roger Harden, who also hit a few from the outside, is by his side. There's Roger in the suit. He had his share of last-second heroics while playing at Kentucky. Some for Joe B. Hall and some for Eddie Sutton. We have a timeout, Georgia. And perhaps a well-timed one by Hugh Durham. Kentucky still lead by nine with 5.49 left. Romney in Atlanta, Tim Brando along with Larry Conley. And the complexion of this game changed when Eddie Sutton decided to go to his own defense. Now, remember, this is a man whose reputation was built on the in-your-face, man-to-man, pick-em-up at the bus defense. But he made that change, and that was the catalyst. That's why he's won 400 games. He just got that against Vanderbilt, as seen here on ESPN the other night, New Year's Eve. You know, Tim, he's a prodigy of Henry Iba. He played for Coach Iba at Oklahoma A&M, now Oklahoma State. Right. And he didn't believe in anything but man-to-man -man defense. There was no such thing as a zone. And of course, Coach Sutton, even in his practices, has that tendency to want to work on defense more than he does offense. I think that was Iba that uh, came up with that cliche, right? Pick him up off the bus. I think it was. Now he's in Stillwater, Oklahoma, governing things where Leonard Hamilton is coaching. You're not old enough to know things like that. 70-59, <laughs> a double-digit lead, and Georgia in a must-score situation now with this possession. They've got to get some movement out of their offense against this Kentucky zone defense. They're not getting any movement. There's Kessler on the baseline. They need to make some cuts through this Kentucky zone. Kentucky is matching up out of it and doing a nice job of matching up out of it. Last three times down the floor, Anderson has forced up shots. That time he tried to get it inside and another turnover. That was a bad pass by Willie Anderson. He hit right there, Burdett, right in the leg, in the bottom part of the leg. Well, Kentucky now with a big opportunity to really open up the gap. Kentucky can afford to be deliberate now with every possession. Use some of the shot clock. And that's exactly what they're doing. Bennett. He's in trouble now, but finds Jenkins. Good idea here. Now they've got 12 seconds left on the shot clock. And they'll call the timeout. 70 to 59 with 448 to play. Eddie Sutton and company feeling good on the road as the nation's bridesmaid. Tim, if you're having problems trying to attack his own defense, you want to hit the gaps. Watch him get the ball to Anderson here on the wing, right deep in the corner. There's the double team by Kentucky. They kick it into Mack. Mack gives it back to Anderson. Now watch the ball move around the perimeter. You cannot stand on the outside and try to attack his own defense. Anderson got the pass right on Mack's leg right there. Kentucky picks it up. You've got to attack the gaps. That's what they've got to do. They can't stand on their perimeter. Davender, he traveled. And he knew it. Georgia has gone stone cold because of that zone. Eddie Sutton 
masterminded it. Five for 25 in this half, and that's after shooting a 56% clip, good enough for a two-point lead at halftime. All right, now they've got Anderson, and there's Mac on the corner. That's what they need to do. That's, that'll break a zone. That's better than finding a gap. But does it go down all the time? Emmanuel, the freshman, behind the back dribble against Anderson. Out of Macon, Georgia. Maybe oh. start thinking about getting Chapman back in the game. Man, a great move. Well, he wants it, doesn't he? There's Jenkins and a foul against Jenkins. All right, Kentucky is owning the glass. They are pounding that offensive board. Watch it here. Bennett would miss the shot, got his rebound. Look at Jenkins right there. Push Kessler to the floor. That's the reason for the foul. It goes to the other end, and Georgia will shoot the one-on-one. -on -one. Alec Kessler is the beneficiary of that push-off down inside by Jenkins. Jody Patton, interesting story, a three-pointer. His father, Jody Patton's father, played at the same high school as my partner, Larry Conley. I don't want to give up his age, but prior to your arrival, you say he really worked with his son a great deal. Yeah, he really did. Uh, he's from Ashland, Kentucky. His dad is, and his dad went to Georgia Southern on a basketball scholarship. And Chapman's back in the game now, talking about father-son combinations. There's another one. Yeah. Jody Patton's father, David Patton, played at an outstanding high school and rich in tradition, and Jody Patton has really manufactured himself into a a good college basketball player and they believe it georgia that he'll be a major contributor not only this year but in the years that follow well his dad was an excellent basketball coach the iron unkind at the line 70 63 it's a seven point deficit facing georgia you see the time remaining just under four minutes now Chapman's off of that bench. He's a little bit cold right now. He maybe needs to move up around a little bit, get the ball. Well, he's not going to do it. He's just going to stick it up. See, he's a little cold, I think. Good move by Locke to get it. Rejected by Willie Anderson. Tim, all the times you come off that bench, you've been sitting over there four or five minutes. You've got to get into the flow of the game before you get a shot. And I don't think Chapman was warm enough or loose enough to get up a good shot, and he missed that one. Chapman looking for the screen. Can't find it in time. Madison over Patton. That's a mismatch. Count it. It could be a three-point play. Heady basketball by the Kentucky Wildcats right there. Good feed by Chapman inside to Madison, who is four inches taller than Patton. He takes advantage of that height and sticks it and draws the foul. Good move by the Kentucky team. That's six now for the man they called the Master Blaster coming out of Memphis, Tennessee, Richard Madison. 230 pounds out of Memphis, leading rebounder a year ago and thought by Eddie Sutton to be the best pure athlete on this team. 73-63 after that three-point trip. Well, Georgia needs to get it going now. They've got their three-point shooters in there. They've got Patton, they've got Hamilton, they've got Mack, and they've got Anderson. All four of them can shoot it. Patton's won't fall. Mack follows and gets the roll. 73-65 with 3.15 left to play. A lot of time to play. That three-point goal has made a big difference in college basketball. Boy, you get a 10-point lead. It's not safe anymore. Madison, nice move. Won't fall, and Kessler with the rebound. Eddie Sutton wanted a foul underneath. Anderson, count it. Great move by Willie Anderson. He got the ball, streaked down the left side, and got it up and in. Good move by Anderson. What's the miss here by Madison? You see Anderson right there. He was the one on the back side. There's Mack. They wanted goaltending. Kentucky did. Kessler with a rebound. He got the outlet pass to Anderson. Locke's too late getting there, and Anderson will go to the line for a three-point chance. And that's Rob Locke's fourth foul. So now Chapman and Locke are playing with four. And Anderson converts for three. Big, big trip. That's almost what it is. It's a five-point play. Kentucky, if they get that hoop, rather than... Georgia getting the rejection, then they would have scored the deuce. Big momentum basket right here. Kentucky needs to reestablish it. Georgia's got it going their way. Hatton is on Chapman now as a switch has been made, and Finnick drives. And the foul against Patton. 
No, oh, they picked up the charge. charge. Yeah, he's got, got the charge. charge. They're going to count the basket. Did, did you see Winston Bennett oh. make that baseline move? I mean, you think that knee, knee isn't healed. He made a great move baseline. Watch it. Watch Patton come over and help. There's Bennett. Good move by Patton to draw the charge, but Winston Bennett made a great baseline move. Good quickness. Boy, you got to get in position in a hurry if you want to take a charge in this league. The athletes are just that good. 75 68, 237 left. Kentucky Wildcats ranked second nationally behind Arizona. And by the way, you'll be seeing a bit later as the third game of our triple hitter tonight. Leading by seven with 237 to play. And the fans from Lexington, the Commonwealth of Kentucky, are out in great numbers. And the percussion section making a lot of noise. Just took over my ears, I can tell you that. <laughs> Hugh Durham's got a mammoth task in front of him, and Eddie Sutton has already done what he could given the foul difficulty that faced him. Check those profiles, coach. You're gonna you're gonna see him again in March. Yep. They will be back, both teams. Patton, who's done a great job as a reinforcement for Hugh Durham all season long to cut it to five if he converts here. Love the haircut. Back to the 60s again, huh? Short hair? Yep. <laughs> 75 70. 237 and counting. There are the timeouts. Georgia with a full complement. Kentucky has two, but right now they don't need to use them. They're in a five-second situation. Bennett, nice, oh. nice move by Winston Bennett. He's been the difference tonight. We've talked a lot about the guards, but when they've had to have a basket, he has responded and responded in a big way. Well, the entire Kentucky team may be having to get used to the fact that Winston Bennett is back because they missed him and really had to change their entire look a year ago. Anderson. Well, Locke was nailed to the floor. Anderson blew by him like he was just standing still. And he was. And he was off balance. 77-72. Two on one. Locke. It's a lock. You just don't miss from that range. Tony Mack is in trouble and finds Patton. Count it for two, 79-74. They're finishing with a flurry, but time running out on Georgia. Bulldogs need a turnover. They've got to get the steal. Put in the hands of your best free throw shooters, and right now that's Chapman and Davender. Isn't that convenient? This game deserves to end with a flurry. It has been a blur for the last two hours. Shot clock, the left-hand portion of your screen. Just over a minute to play. Again, Patton against Chapman. Interesting matchup now with just 15 seconds and counting left on the shot clock. Clear out. Sir Rex wants to take it. Instead, he finds Madison. Yes! Waves off the lock jam. A foul prior to the jam. What a play by Chapman in trouble how about this recovery he goes straight to the floor Patton's trying to come up with it right there Mac tries to get it he kicks it over to Madison right there who misses the shot Locke follows with a jam but the foul is committed before them so it's Madison it will go to the line well he wanted that basket didn't he <laughs> Folks, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to watch this guy for two more years. He's just a sophomore, and we feel like we've been talking about him for five years. It's scary to think how good he is and how better he will become in the next two years. As a freshman, he was remarkable. But at the same time, he had to be. Winston Bennett was out. Now, he has to work more in a team system, finding the inside player and Winston Bennett, and he's just as outstanding now. You know, Tim, the other thing is, too, this is a pretty young club. Yes, they're going to lose Davender, and yes, they're going to lose Bennett. Uh, they've got some other players on there. They lose Madison. They lose Locke. They lose Jenkins. But they've got great players coming on. Leron Ellis, who's got a sprained ankle, mm -hmm. who's not able to play in this game at 6'11". He's a great player coming in. They've recruited three super players and Sean Kemp, Chris Mills, and Sean Woods. 
They're a basketball team that, well, what can I say? It's yeah. tradition. Notre Dame, the mere statement, rings of tradition. They play LaSalle coming up next. And then John Saunders will have a half hour edition of Sports Center at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by Arizona and New Mexico. And if you think Lute Olson's club will be getting out easy, forget about it. You just don't win that easily at the pit. I tell you, you go into Albuquerque to play Gary Colson's club, it's a tough night. Speaking of tough nights, right now Georgia on the short end of a five-point game with only 44 seconds left to play. Larry, it's been a while, but I love the transitions. Chapman, 87% from the line. Davender at 84%. And it is Madison that will go to the line as we come back. And that means trouble for Kentucky most of the time. Only 33%. That beats having Locke jam it through. Well, these are big ones. That's what you got to do. You got to walk up there and make them. And he yeah. has. Locke almost got that ball. And that's crucial because now two three-pointers could tie the game. And Davender, the arms ever present. All right, you got 39 seconds. I really don't think Hugh Durham has a choice in this matter. He's got to go for the three-point goal. And he's got to go for him right now. Georgia has two timeouts remaining. You know, it might be a good idea for Kentucky to change their defense to come out and really put the pressure on that three-point line and make them shoot inside. Mac! A rainbow for Tony Mack in the Omni. Still a couple of timeouts remaining. A near steal. And they get Mack with the foul. Against Davender, who is an 84% free throw shooter. Tim, this might be a good opportunity for Eddie Sutton to kind of take a look at his defense. Yeah, that zone defense has worked and it's been successful. But the uh, mood of the game has changed a little bit in the last two minutes. They may want to decide to come out and start to play these guys man-to-man -man and get beyond that three-point range and force that ball more to the inside and give up that two-point goal. Rex Chapman, who has been responsible for so much of the Kentucky success tonight at a time in the game when Chapman normally is outstanding, he has played just that well with four fouls. And they will ice the man at the line, though he is at 84%. You say to yourself, well, he's a great free throw shooter, but has he shot that many and he hasn't shot any in the month of January? <laughs> That's true. You're right. He hasn't shot none tonight anyway. You know, I was talking to Eddie Sutton before this game, and he really felt very comfortable if he could get away with a win here. His schedule really is very beneficial to him going in right now because they go back home. They've got two games at home against Mississippi State and Auburn, who's been decimated and lost to Mike Jones and Jeff Moore, who that broke game his hand. Will, that game a week from tonight will be on ESPN. So uh, there's two wins, and then Alabama, who's down this year, and then they've got three more in a row at home, mm -hmm. Tennessee, Florida, and LSU. So they could go into uh, the first part of February with a very impressive schedule. Schedule of wins. Well, the Southeastern Conference, you figure that there are several teams that are going to beat Kentucky at home. Georgia is not really one of them because the home turf has never necessarily been an advantage. Hugh Durham has always just been in a situation where he took advantage of what mismatches he had, and he was the first to admit that. He said, yeah, I've won four out of the last six against Kentucky, but in those games, I had mismatches that I could exploit, and we were able to do that. I'll tell you what, uh, with Bennett back into that lineup for Kentucky, you can see what kind of difference it's made for Kentucky, a club that was 18 and 12 last year. He is a major force to reckon with. Lavender, four for five tonight. But this is his first big one in January this year. He's been making big ones since he left Boys and Girls High School in <laughs> Brooklyn, New York. He needs just... 346 points to hit the 1610 career point mark, which will put him in 10th place all time in the Kentucky all time scorers list. And now the Wildcats will talk defense with the help of Coach Eddie Sutton and staff. 82 77, 26 seconds left. Still, it's three point time for Hugh Durham. 
I'll give you a scenario. Let's come out full court zone pressure. 2-2-1 by Kentucky. Force Georgia to move the ball a lot, run off some seconds on that clock, force them to move the ball to the inside, and don't allow them to shoot that outside shot. And there you see it. For the season, 36% tonight, they're right on target, and it was that zone that forced the inability to hit from three in the second half because they were hitting in the first half. Don't forget, Notre Dame and LaSalle, Jim Kelly, and Bill Raffrey are standing by at the Joyce and Athletic and Convocation Center to bring you that one here on ESPN. Sports Center with John Saunders to follow, and then number one, Arizona. Really has not been pushed in a game with the exception of the Duke win, and that was a remarkable win, though it was at home for Arizona. Lou Olson's team deserves to be number one. Well, I tell you what, you won't find better players than Sean Elliott, Steve Kerr. They are absolutely outstanding athletes. They may be, be playing a better team tonight on the road with a chance of beating them than they would in the Pac 10. New Mexico at that arena is as tough as anyone. Arizona would face in the Pac-10 Conference. All right, if you're Georgia now, you got to get the ball up the floor, and you got to get it up quickly. You've got a chance to go for three now or two now, but you got to come back with one three-pointer at some point. Here comes Kentucky with that pressure. I should correct that. That game between Notre Dame and LaSalle is at the Palestra in Philadelphia. That certainly is a factor. 82-77, 20 seconds left. they got to get it up. Steal by Kentucky. That may do it. Yep. Chapman. Fouled, Anderson gets it. 12 seconds left. It really does become a moot point. Hugh Durham knows that turnover was costly. I tell you, the pressure really bothered Georgia. Patton looked up and he saw Davender in midcourt, and all of a sudden Kentucky had extended their defense, came out of that zone, and that pressure got him a turnover, and now Chapman with a chance to ice the victory for Kentucky. He's had a great night, oh. Tim. Outstanding night. That's a happy bench right there. You really run out of adjectives for Chapman. The only thing we, we know for certain is that he will get better. Max got to throw it up. The Georgia Bulldogs played perhaps as well as, as they could possibly play for a half. And many teams get out of sync when one particular move is made and tonight Eddie Sutton went to the zone and that spoiled the upset bit of the dogs. It's all over and second ranked Kentucky who won by seven at home after trailing by nine with three and a half to play against Vanderbilt on New Year's Eve has done it again. They were pushed to the limits but yet came away with a victory. A hard fought one here at the Omni in Atlanta Georgia. The Bulldogs will drop to eight and five. But rest assured, they'll be in shape come February. And Kentucky moves to 9-0. For Larry Conley, this is Tim Brando saying so long from the Omni. Our final Kentucky 84, Georgia 77. Happy New Year from Atlanta. Let's get back now to Bob Lee. Thank you, Tim. Well, number two in the country is tested and found not wanting on this evening with a victory. In just a moment, we're taking you to the Palestra in Philadelphia. Notre Dame taking on LaSalle, and as we said, many strange things can happen in basketball since inside the famed Palestra after Sports Center, the number one team in the country, Arizona, a very tough postmark in college basketball, the Pitt in Albuquerque. Quickly checking a couple of scores. Pittsburgh today, speaking of Pitt with a victory over Florida. Wednesday, Pitt will be playing at Georgetown, the opener of the Big East. Pitt right now is 9-0, but Rod Brooken, the number two scorer on this team, academically ineligible, out for the balance of the year. North Carolina, a tight game, opens it up down the stretch and defeats the Bruins 80-73. to We'll check more scores and highlights throughout the entire evening, but now let's get to the Palestra in Philly. Jim Kelly and Bill Raftery, gentlemen. Six in a 12-point run as Kentucky is now 9-0 on the season. Pittsburgh a win this afternoon over Florida, an easy victory as Jerome Blaine had 21 rebounds, only three points. But Rod Brooken, the uh, number two scorer on this team for Pittsburgh, academically ineligible. He is out for the balance of the season. He dressed, did not play today, and he will not be able to dress come the new week in the new semester. North Carolina was in Los Angeles today, a victory in Westwood over UCLA by seven. J.R. Reed had 25 points on 9 of 11 shooting. Carolina, by the way, still two weeks away from the opening game in its ACC schedule. Wyoming is doing a number on the Lumberjacks of Stephen F. Austin at altitude in Laramie tonight. 
in the second half. The Cowboys working on their 11th straight victory have that comfortable lead. Syracuse a laugh for tonight over Siena. Ronnie Cycli had a season-high 30 points. Syracuse will open the Big East schedule on Tuesday at Boston College. UNLV, last year when the Ron and Rebs went into uh, Las Cruces to take on New Mexico State, a very tight game. They were down big time, had a rally. They've got a five-point lead at halftime. Rebels, by the way, are 9-0 lifetime against the Aggies. Iowa State this afternoon, a comfortable victory over the Coyotes of South Dakota. LaFesta Rhodes had 26 points. Gary Tompkins had 20. Georgetown had a very tough one tonight against the Hurricanes of Miami at the Knight Center. This could have been the biggest win for Bill Foster's team in the third year of reviving that program down in Miami. John Thompson getting his team to play defense. They always play defense, but Eric Burns alley of Tito Horford. A season-high 26 tonight for Tito as the Canes would lead it by seven. Mark Tillman, though, had 24 points off the bench for the Hoyas. Bill Foster's club is down at halftime by seven, but then they climb back and build a seven-point lead. Dennis Burns with a feed. Eric Brown with the jumper and an upset possibly in the making at the Tiny Knight Center, but Charles Smith would lead that killer patented Georgetown 12-point run. Drives the lane, gets the foul. 22 points for Charles Smith. The Hoyas win it by the count of 82 to 78. They will open Big East play on Wednesday against Pittsburgh. That patented Georgetown spurt. So now the schedule certainly gets very serious for Georgetown into the Big East. They were tested tonight. Our game just concluded. Notre Dame with the victory in the Palestra over LaSalle by the count of 68-59. Now let's get back to the city of Brotherly Hoop and rejoin Jim Kelly. James? Okay.